So last week, we were, ended with question 21, what is true faith? We went through all of those verses, and then at the end we read answer 21. True faith is not only a sure knowledge, whereby I hold for truth all that God has revealed to us in his word, but also a hearty trust, which the Holy Spirit works in me by the gospel, that not only to others, but to me also, forgiveness of sins, everlasting righteousness, and salvation are freely given by God, merely of grace, only for the sake of Christ's merits. Amen. Yes. Now, we didn't get to the question below that was, is true faith blind? Why or why not? And so after hearing that answer, and if you answered the question, great. If not, no big deal. Uh, what does that, is, is, after hearing this answer, do you think that being blind, or being, ha, is true faith blind to the realities of the world? Is true faith uh, blind to the nature of God? Is true faith uh, blind to uh, maybe putting your trust in something that you are unaware of? I see a lot of heads shaking no. What do you think? It's tough. But I would like to point out to the answer, uh, the first little line, where it's a sure knowledge. Mm -hmm. It is, it is a, a truth that is, has been revealed to us. And so one might say that uh, a common definition or the way that it is used in our world today is faith is something that is unknown. You have a belief in something you don't understand, and that is faith. Whereas if you talk to any Christian who's studied and been on their journey a little bit, you'll realize very quickly that their faith is grounded in something. It is, they have proof upon proof. They have te testimony. They have witness. They have the word. They have all these things that are, they have the gospel. They've, they've preached it. They've, teach, they've taught it. They've uh, seen it work in the world. And that is, is not a blindness. Amen. That is not a ignorance. That is not being in the dark and, and hoping that what God says is true. It is more a sure belief in the truth. And, yes. And that's what answer 21 is trying to convey to us. Now, does anybody have any questions on that? Because I know that the definitionally, the way we use faith or blind faith is that we're willing to, you know, walk off a cliff and, and hope that God will catch us or make sure we do not fall to our death. Whereas that is how what I would say our culture uses it. Whereas the Christian would use it more like, I'm going to walk this way and I know God will take care of me in the way he has promised and revealed to us that he will take care of us. Maybe walking off the cliff was a bad egg metaphor, but uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, you can't, I mean, I'm thinking of myself. I didn't have true faith when I accepted Christ as my personal Savior. How, how do you mean? Well, because I didn't know anything. Right. Well, your knowledge can, so, but your knowledge can increase. something before. Right. And what's the, what's the known, what's the known thing at the Christ, moment that Christ is what? Christ is real, that he is the Son of God. Right. And he's your Lord and Savior. Yeah. Well, yes. So right. Have to get past that one right. And that's what they're that's what they're pointing to here is that um, the people who have true faith understand the promises of God, who Christ is, and it could be it could be elementary. It could be a small understanding that doesn't that will grow over time, but that doesn't mean you don't have an understanding at all. Like you're not taking somebody's word for it. You are, you have a, you've now connected a personal relationship with God, and that is true. Whereas, um, you know, uh, what would be a good example? Uh, Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Israel was, they were kind of going with the flow. They were listening to whoever, whoever was ever in power and saying, oh yeah, I guess that's the king. You know, we'll have faith in that God, or we'll have that faith in that God. There was no direct relationship there. There was no... Uh, <laughs> Well, that is more blind faith. I'm blindly following the king in whatever he's believing. And I mean, the, not the king, but the king of the time. Yeah, a king. 
and not developing a personal relationship. That is more blind faith. And that is how a flock can be led astray. That's how bad shepherding can happen. Oh, I pray everyone's okay. Um, so would you not think in terms of, and did you Old Testament, I was writing down Abel knew, Noah knew, Abraham knew, Jacob knew, Joseph knew, they all knew who God was without right. any other. Right, they knew. correct. It's a spirit movement. It's a, it's, it's not now, can that, is it, let's see here, uh, uh, building on what you just said, is it easy to hand somebody that faith? Because there are plenty of people who will look at you and go, you're absolutely nuts. Oh, no. Yeah, absolutely. And that's maybe where the blind part from the secular culture comes in. Because they don't have the revelation. They can't see what you're following. But you see it clearly. It's blind to them. It's blind to them, exactly. Well, that's where, uh, again, you, you look at the, the generations of, of, uh, of Cain, and then you look at Noah. Small family, the remnant. Mm-hmm. He's building an ark for a hundred and some odd years. Yeah. And that's, that's faith. That's, and not like, oh, I, I was told this and I don't believe that it could be true. I'm blindly doing this. No, there's a re- I'm walking with the Lord. I'm following his instructions. This is, this is a knowledge. Yes, exactly. This is a purpose. This is not like, uh, you know, they, I don't, I'm trying to think of a more uh, secular spiritualism that uses something like where, you know, well, I, I just throw up my arms and I blindly have faith that I can just walk through life and God will be the bumpers at a bumper bowling alley and make sure nothing ever befalls oh, yeah. me and everything goes there. That's blind faith. That's not a relationship. That's not a knowledge of the word or how things, that's presumptuous, exactly. That's, that, that's really bordering on uh, you should not test the Lord your God. <laughs> and that's where, um, again, it can be simple. It doesn't have to be complex. The knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of your relationship with him. But yes, as you go through your path, that will grow. Your, your testimony will grow. You will see it more. And so maybe I don't, I wouldn't equate the person who, you know, the child who just started believing versus the 80-year-old who's been believing. Yes, they have more experience. They can tell more stories for sure. But that doesn't change the knowledge of faith, which is um, the sure knowledge, but then also the hearty trust. And then so if you go, I think that's one, two, that starts on line three of answer 21. So true faith is the sure, not only a sure knowledge, so underline sure knowledge, and then underline hearty trust. Because that'll be, that's a, a, a I don't want to say famous, but an often go to, to people who are atheists or secular. They'll be like, oh, well, you, don't, you believe in something you don't see. You believe in something that, you know, doesn't exist. Or you believe in something that just blindly and that's when you come back with, you say immediately, no, I, I know this to be true. This isn't a blind faith. This is a true faith where I've seen this. This is not some obscure God that, or dead God that happened thousands of years ago. This is an alive God that I see working in my life daily. And this is, you know, here's how it is and here's how it lines up in the word. And this is why this, I understand these truths. Mm-hmm. Well, right. Right. So we have the revelation of of Christ being our Lord and Savior. We 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 now have that that basic uh, basic belief that we need, which we're going to go into in the next couple chapters here. Um, but then you're absolutely correct. Once you have that knowledge, it's also a purpose. Like there's also a thing that the Lord is asking you to do. 
and then you need to pursue that. And so not only did you have this moment of you know, him being your savior, but he's also your Lord. He also gives you directions. He also gives you commands. He gives you purpose. And if you didn't believe, like have that trust, have that knowledge, then people would say, well, you're just blindly following something you do not know. And that happens to people yeah, that, all the time. That, would, that is the exact um, response that I got from my kids. You cannot know. And then I, you know, but I, I started with my little story here. Mm -hmm. With my children, I said, but something happens within the human heart mm -hmm. when you, you've, you have accepted a connection when you accept Christ as your Savior, and God comes in immediately and changes what you know, who you are, and who you are. When, right. I, don't, I don't think I was aware that he changed who I was yet, but I was certainly aware. I can remember the moment I accepted Christ. I felt a little awkward. Mm -hmm. And then I went outside after this incident, and the sun came out on a rainy day. I mean, yes. it was raining. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the sun came out, and I thought, <laughs> just, wow, something happened that well, I can't explain, but I knew it. And when you have those moments of revelation, you can that's when you can look out into creation and see God's glory. Amen. That's when, of course. Yes, because before, that would have just been another... You know, break in the storm. Yeah, exactly. But something happened. Your, your view, your heart, your, the eyes of your heart had changed. Yes. And so when it comes to what you talked about with your children, understand that, um, you know, the blind faith was existing before you had God and will lead to this. And the reason why I put check hash marks here is because when you have this moment of revelation or... Maybe well, we'll talk about this 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 Paul Saul to Paul like story here is that you can look back and see God moving in your life and in other people's lives in a way you had not before, and that allows you to go, oh okay, look at that, I see God working. How does He work? How do we know that? Well, we see Scripture, we see our failures, we see our sins, and we see it line up with, oh, this is all talked about. This is all in the Bible. This is all in the Old Testament, or this is all in uh, the Gospels or Acts. I see this now. And then I also see, if I continued in this direction, what would happen? This would happen, and 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 this would happen. All these things would happen. And then you go, no, I don't want that. I, I want to pursue a relationship with the Lord. And what is that we can see also in the word, and that's one, two, three, four, five. That's not blind. That is a sure knowledge of things to come, and not just not just one direction, purpose and service, but also rebellion and ignorance. So you know and have have, have knowledge of through the word and through God's promises everything that will happen. But that is not blind at all. That's, that's a sure knowledge of things to come. That is a sure knowledge of what happens when you know, you're in rebellion with God. And as I've said many times, the more that you go on your walk with Christ, or the more that you embrace the Word and study it, you see this more plainly as day. The problem is, is they don't see any of this. They don't see the Old Testament cycle. They don't see being a slave to sin. And that, because they don't have that revelation, it looks like just blind. It looks like they, okay, let me use a different. They're here in the secular world. And it's like, oh no, I got a lot of choices. I can follow different religions. I can follow own paths. It's whatever direction I want to go in. But it's my judgment to decide which way I should go. And it really doesn't matter in the universal or the grand scheme of things. But really, all these pathways are the same. They're this. 
it, it's an illusion of choice. People who are slaves to sin believe they have free will when in actual... Yeah. <laughs> everyone has faith. Right, exactly. It's what happens. It's what, yes. Right. And so exactly. it's the action part, yes. I think about a man years ago who came into those office. Uh-huh. Okay. Financially. Sorry. To, oh, de- financially. I was like, whoa, like the lake of fire? That's a harsh judgment. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to explain to you. Okay. So they had a business and they were near bankruptcy. Mm-hmm. That that is a little bit more blind faith because right. Well, well, no, and that's the allure of the pros, the prosperity gospel. Now that doesn't mean that God cannot bless you. That doesn't mean that He cannot work through you. Some people are given uh, much wealth, and then it is in order to uh, either give that or use that money to uh, spread the word. So that. That can happen, but that is not everyone's gift, and we are uh, we are expected to have a certain level of responsibility, or else we become Adam again in the garden, saying God's didn't take care of it. This is all His plan. Everything is in His hands, and we uh, deny our own stewardship. Yes. And that is a great counter, like to add apologetics. That's a great counter because they don't, they divorce their motives for their actions from beliefs or religious talk. Right. Or what you've been told. And that's why the greatest thing is okay, you think that. Why do you believe that? You think the government's going to take care of you? You think this is going to be there? Right. Right. They yeah. want to believe that God's going to take care of them. I haven't done my part, but I'm just sure that God will take this. And... Now, there are times in the Word where that faith is required. But that isn't blind because we go, oh, no, you know what? Right now, I am in, I am like Elijah. The, the, the whole culture is against me. I'm out in the wilderness. And... I am now walking in the same steps of the word. What does Christ say? What does the Spirit say in this moment? And then I can have faith in that. But if you don't have, if you're not close to the word, if you don't understand how God works, what his promises are, and you have a a highly inflated sense of your own position, that you can jump off the top of the temple and, you know, angels will come down and scoop you up. Like, that's not humility. That's not a good understanding or a good relationship with God. And so I have complete faith that God works how he's always worked in Scripture. And so when I see Scripture in the world, I can have faith. I know what comes next. And not because I'm some fortune teller, but because that's how God works. And I have a, I have a knowledge of that and a trust in that. And the more, and so you use the government example. So we have our, our friend here, which is, which they are actually having blind faith because they say, okay, I trust in the government to keep the lights on. I trust in the government to make sure that these things that are in my life will be taken care of, that I won't have be taken advantage of X, Y, and Z. Problem with that is, is they have an ignorance about governments <laughs> and not just their own, but historically and scripturally, they have an ignorance about what governments do. And they also are basing their promises, their future, their hope, their provision on what the government says. And if you're walking this earth for any length of time, you know that what the, what the government tells you is going to happen, some isn't exactly reliable. And so that is a blind faith. 
That is a is a, an extreme blind faith. But they would rather accuse you of this being blind faith because it would force them with any length of diving into their own beliefs to acknowledge that they too are blind to that. And that's painful. My son, um, Kevin, is a successful businessman. He's done very well. Mm -hmm. And we were on the phone last night. And he said, I don't know how we got on to the economy. Mm -hmm. But he said he's very astute in business. And he said, none of this makes any sense. Yep. None of this that's happening should be happening right now. Mm -hmm. Our country should be. Up Correct. At this moment. Mm -hmm. And he said, and we're not. In fact, we're strong. So he said, this doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. to anything. That yeah, it's a deception. deception. And war makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. And so here's the thing. If you have scripture, if you have the word in your life, everything that's happening right now it's makes perfect it's sense. It's <laughs> it's <laughs> Correct. And that's where I think some of the well, like the more um, successful or brainy types or academic types, they can make that connection very rapidly. Because you say, look, at this, there's a pattern in Scripture. There is something there that God has been consistent about with his relationship with humanity. And through time and time again, yes, it doesn't matter what empires they were, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Canaanites, or if it was the Romans. Like, it doesn't matter where in time they this continues to happen and God is consistent about it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's where we can not only have uh, a deep knowledge and trust in God's word and his actions, but then also too, when this cliff <laughs> is there and they're blindly walking to it, mm -hmm. they believe that everything will keep going. Mm -hmm. And I just... Uh, that's the, um, I think, the illusion or the deception of progress is that if, if man can just have enough faith in science or enough faith in the government, we'll never have a famine again. We'll never have a war again. We'll never, we'll never see a sickness again, which is, again, not true. You have to be ignorant to yesterday, literally yesterday. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Majority of the population was 35 pounds because of lack of food. Yes. And, and this just happened in our lifetime, in a short time ago. Right. And we don't... So one of the things that, that I'm seeing through your saying is, um, and, and what I love about the Bible is, yes, what we know follows patterns. Right. Those patterns are, are types and shadows of our future. Yes, because they're not, it's not like a, a pattern that you, uh, that, you know, willy-nilly picked up. It's, it's God being consistent through all time. You, if you f follow the Lord, you will, your society, your culture, your tribe will be the remnant. Will not, it, it, the world will still be fallen and exist. However, you will uh, curry the Lord's favor. If you forget God and his commandments, if you do not develop that relationship, if you do not rebuke your children, if you um, will go along to get along or lie in order to protect your legacy or your investment, that is when you, you've, you've now strayed from what you know, or maybe you don't know when you're here, but you're commit, whether or not you know you're doing it wrong or you're ignorantly doing it wrong, the, this is the same destination. So it's, not, it's actually not question mark, it's death. That's, that's, what's, that's where you're headed. And it doesn't matter if it's literal and historical, like society and culture, it happening again, or final, spiritual. You are, you are destined for the second death. Yes. It's all the same at all scales, at all levels. And that's why you can have a simple understanding of what you believe and knowledge and trust and it will serve you just as well as a deep understanding mm -hmm. because you have faith in the Lord, true faith in the Lord. And that's where, uh, you know, we can, 
quibble all day. And well, we're not going to quibble, but we're going to go through like what are those basic beliefs that you need. But ultimately, what you're saying is that you believe in God. You believe in his revelation. You believe in these things. And not only does that put into context your past, where you're standing, but also your future. And that's the Alpha and the Omega, the is, was, and will ever be. Is this word, is this understanding, is that we are fallen. Through Christ, we, we can be servants, we are redeemed, and, at le- and, and, and we have salvation. Through turning away from God, for being ignorant of God, we are, that is what we are destined for. And entire civilizations follow this exact same pattern. doesn't matter if it's an individual, or if it's family, or if it's church, or if it's community, or a nation, tribe, however you want to slice it up, God works this way. Right, correct. There is no empire that is internal other than the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. But, but again, we have faith that America will always stand because if it doesn't, things will get hard real quick. And then we, the thing that we wanted our provision and safety from is gone. Right. That's, uh, you can see that practically after um, 9-11. America got a black eye, and a lot of people's gods bled, and that made them angry and frustrated because their safety was all of a sudden gone. And that drove a lot of people deep into patriotism, which is a a normal, or I should say a historically normal uh, reaction to that, is all of a sudden if your safety is now jeopardized, you're now willing to give up sacrifice more at the false at the you know the idol of america sacrifice your rights or your faith or your your willingness to you know pursue certain things and so you sacrifice if you don't have this you'll make sacrifices to your your god whoever it may be and a little g god to in order to keep this from falling out but you're you're wily coyote you're walking, you're off the cliff and you're making sacrifices. And you're like, if I just, if I believe it hard enough, the cliff is going to disappear and there's not, and then, and then I will not fall. But you're going against God's word. You're going against the, the order of the universe. You're going against truth. And so that b- breeds denial. It breeds horrific uh, sacrifices of self and others to make this, to not acknowledge what is about to happen. And that's what makes the collapse even more great. That is, is because then everybody's doing, is, is running to a, a more tangible, secular thing that they can see because they're blind to the truth. Do you think that uh, COVID? Yes, 100%. Did the same yeah. Thing. Worse. I argued that in an elder meeting once. I was like, you guys are all praising, uh, what was it? The Greek god is Asclepius? Asclepius? And it was all the, the God of medicine. That he will save us. If we just, if we sacrifice enough, if we do the right rituals, if we, if we give up our children, then, then we will all be protected. We just have to wear this ornamental garb and we have to, you know, drink of the covenant or maybe in, yeah, sure. No, I think it's more divisive than anything because if you got the shot, yeah, you have no faith. If you don't get the shot, I'm thinking you're stupid. You know, it's, everybody has a different yep. view on that. Correct. The difference is, though. Exactly. So where was your heart is the question. It has nothing to do with the tools that are in front of you. Like a, a, let's say, let's let's take it a little simpler. Like a, let's say a, a Tylenol. Okay. Do you believe that the pharmaceutical company has your best interest in you? Do you believe that the Tylenol will save you? Or do you believe that the Tylenol is there because God made a good world and I have these things and it's God's provision that the Tylenol is sitting there when I need it? It's a little bit less about where your heart is. It's more, I'm sorry, not less. It's more about where your heart is. It's more about where provision, redemption, and salvation lie. And not, because most people in the COVID times, um, man, still to this day, their faith and their belief was put into public because then all of a sudden people would say, if you don't believe in this 
like I believe in this, you're evil. Or we're all dead. Or, and it just all of a sudden it goes, okay, now I see that this person's belief is on full display. Now, does that mean there weren't Christians that are, were faithful that got the shot and all of a sudden they're not Christians anymore? No, not at all. Not at all. It's about where the belief was. It's where the faith was, where the knowledge, where the trust was. I really believe God gave you revelation on that in the last couple of months. Oh, good. I hope, I hope it's positive. It was, it was really, really difficult for me to understand. But what I, what I believe that the Lord was dealing me with is that that shot does not have control over his people. No matter whether you took it or not. It's not that's not how his people will survive or live or die. And he, that's, yes. Yes. Yep. And that was tough for a lot of people it because was it was it was a huge gray area that required discernment because you had it was what well, was a kind of a big old mess of people going like, well, no, you need to take this. If you don't take it this, you don't. Division. It was definitely a division. So so really, who's winning there? Right. It's the enemy. Yeah. He's yeah. the divider. Right. <laughs> and so we we all learn lessons about that. But again, this is, goes into the discernment of spirits, not just what you're participating in, but what other people are participating in, how what they, what they believe in, what's in their heart. Are there, are there actions following their words? Are there words and actions lining up with Scripture? If they are, is it good or is this evil? Is this a, is this a, a fear of uh, death? Is this an anxiety of loss? Or is this a something that you're being called to do it, that you have faith in the Lord on? And that's, that's an individual discernment because I cannot be a third party and look at somebody on the street and see them wearing a mask and go, oh, that person's crazy. They're a part of a cult. No, maybe they have somebody at home that's sick that, that would wear a mask normally. Like, you know, um, and I told that to my wife, I think it was two or three months in. I said, this mask thing is going to go away. And what we really have to do is remember that just because we see somebody wearing a mask doesn't mean that they're afraid, that it could mean many other things. And so don't immediately assume their beliefs on that. Walk with them a little bit. Understand them. Talk to them. And then you can, you can help guide them. Because you want everyone to grow in the Word. You want everyone to grow closer to the Lord, even your enemies. That's why we pray for them. So, but yes... 2020 was definitely that. And it was, it was hard on a lot of people. It was a way to divide the church, too. And there are oh, yeah. problems and inside families. the Christian church. Mm-hmm. Inside the Christian church, we have so many divisions. But this just was a, it was awful. Yeah. Because right. you know, it was awful. What I was seeing. And I think it was because of the pandemic. And so, I mean, we all had different opinions. Everyone in this room did. Yeah. I have imagine it. Families had different opinions. Mm-hmm. Because I know Mm-hmm. And the goal for the United States right now, as far as government goes, is to eliminate the thinkers inside the church. Well, yeah, or just eliminate the church. Yeah. <laughs> right. But if you, if those who are able to teach like you do are gone, or they don't have the support of the community, mm-hmm. there is no church. No, that's not true. I mean, no, no, no. I mean, the building where you learn and stuff like that. I, mean, no, no, I said that absolutely wrong. Hold what on. I mean is we need teachers in the church. Mm-hmm. Who hold the faith of believers right. so that the church can grow. Yes. And but, that division was meant to break that. Right. But that, correct. But that's why we have elders and overseers. Oh, yeah. Is because it's easy to knock one person down. You know, oh. cops show up, take me off in handcuffs. I don't think that's the end of this church. Right. Yeah. I think that we have elders, we have deacons, we have people who have been here that have studied under, not, it's not my teaching, it's the word. Uh-huh. All you need to do is just keep pointing to the word and the church continues to go, regardless of who's in handcuffs or not here or absent. And that's where us, that's where ch- the church's weakness became apparent is that you had a lot of strong pastors or uh, judges or people just singularly. But then what, did they do a good job of upbuilding and edifying the rest of the church? As I've said to a few people a number of times, 
I want to be obsolete. If my job is doing well, if more people are growing and understanding, and I am less, if I am reduced, because that means Christ is increased in all of you. Amen. And Amen. right, and that's where churches struggled. They really did, because then they didn't have any leadership. And I was uh, helping, or I was at a church who was like this, where you all of a sudden they had no pastor because the pastor had left, the interim had left. And leadership fell heavy on the elders, but they were not strong in the word. They had, they had to put their faith and understanding to the TV mm. to see what the TV was saying. And that's where they were drawing all their conclusions. Oh. Yeah. As opposed to looking to scripture and saying like, all right, the world's a mess. Well, the world's always a mess. There's always war. There's always famine. There's always pestilence. What does the word say we should be doing right now? And that's where the discernment of elders really kicks in. It's not the day-to-day, -day, hey, is the, is, the, is the walk shoveled? Yes, of course, we need to pay attention to that. But to make those hard, faithful, scriptural decisions, spiritual decisions, and to guide the church that way. And that's where a good, healthy church will have many people like that. I know not everybody wants to sit in the elder chair, but I think every single person in the congregation is a stronger Christian than I've seen in whole other churches or whole other elder boards. And so that gives me an incredible amount of faith in God's work in this church. No, it's amazing when you think about what 2022 was for this church and how we, we, we you know, there was a level of thriving. I mean, it was, there was, I, I'm sure it was very difficult on the elders and the search but at the same time, that, you know, you never felt an oppression, you never felt desperation no, we felt because this was the foundation. Right. And I think it was, it, it is, to, to your point, it's a real testimony to what God is doing in each and every one of us here at Addison Congregational, mm. that we can have such a dramatic change in leadership. Mm. And look where we are today. You know? and, I, and I just want to say that when people say that we have blind faith, we actually have a guidebook. Yeah. <laughs> we are not walking around blind. Right. You know? we, have yeah. our, we have our guide right here. And the nice thing is, Hebrews 11 even gives us a definition of faith. That faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things not seen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we all have experiential or anecdotal evidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of what? Oh, but but God did this in my life, and God did this, yeah. and I had this relationship with God, and God yeah. God changed me. I am a new creature in Christ. Yeah. You know, then then what are they going to say? And that's why we have the Holy Spirit to bring yeah. those things to our remembrance, yeah. to bring the gospel to our remembrance. You know, I just have one little thing to say. All right, so and then fun. Phil, go ahead. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I saw something totally different in this church. I couldn't identify it at first, but then I realized it was that fundamental stability mm -hmm. that other churches don't have. I've been in many churches, and here's this little church in Addison. A little bit mighty. So <laughs> fundamentally stable. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally stable. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Because, because really, I mean, that is a choice. That does not mean you don't have faith. That's Correct. Right. Yes. You get the right. Shot. right. No, yeah. You, your faith is that you're going to be taken care of, but no matter what happens. Right. If you die, you're, you know where you're going. Amen. Right. Correct. So yes. When people were trying to divide and say, well, you have little faith because in God because you got a shot. No, no, that was wrong. That that was Correct. Wrong. Now, where I took... Umbridge was a little bit more where um, it started less about the vaccine itself or right. the shot itself, more about um, the, the might of propaganda, right. which I am very keenly have experienced and aware of, pushing people's belief, changing the way people worship. And I saw in churches, you know, mandatory 
or else you can't yeah, come to yeah, church. Right. Changing the way people worship, that, that was, that's where I was like, whoa, that's a, that's a big line we just crossed. And it's not saying that that didn't happen county to county or church to church or state to state, but just understanding that all of a sudden uh, the government was directly involved with how people worshiped. And that was the biggest red flag for me. Not so much if you got the shot or didn't get the shot. It's not so much as like, oh, well, I think, you know what, I'm going to stay at home because I think that this is the best thing for my family or for others. Fine. I have, I have no problem with you discerning and making a judgment call that's best for you and your family. Now, if all of a sudden you start going against Scripture, I'm going to rebuke you. I'm going to warn you. Yeah, that's a different scenario. Exactly. Correct. They were saying, you, you have little faith because you got a shot. You, you didn't trust in the Lord. That is not true. Right. No. And in my opinion, that's not true. No, it's not true. Because the whole thing about we know where the end is at. Correct. And so, so if it, that's what God, if, if God wants you to, if, if that was your end time with right. God, that's your end time. And Whether you got a shot or not. Correct. And that's where, again, back to the original point, it's where your heart is. Yep. It's is, is your heart faithfully following the Lord. That's where it's, I think, is the, the majority uh, of where people went wrong is that they let fear and anxiety and um, a lack of God's provision enter their heart. And that manifested in division, accusation, deception, um, maybe putting on blinders and hiding. And so the Holy Spirit will convict you. I have full faith in that. If you did something wrong or you made a misstep, you will be convicted of that in your heart and you will know, I, I did this wrong. I will have to do this better next time. And that doesn't, and that could be getting a vaccine or not getting a vaccine. That could be, you know, uh, accusing people of not being good Christians, or it could be something as simple as, you know, posting something on Facebook. You know, it, it just where is that heart? And you'll, through reading the word, through coming and hearing the word, through speaking the word, through studying the word, you will know that. That will be brought to your remembrance. I have full faith completely that God will convict you when you go wrong, especially if you're a seeker, if you're studying the word. And then you can go, okay, I did this wrong. Teach me. Forgive me. For, forgive me. Mm-hmm. You know, you repented. I Forgive me, but then also teach me. Show me the way to go. Instruct me on how to, where I went wrong so that way I do not sin again. Go and sin no more. Right. Correct. <laughs> But again, it, it comes down to where the faith is, is, is where, are you trying? Did you get the shot because you're, you were called, you found purpose that you were trying to follow scripture, you were trying to go this way? Yes, then your heart is good. If this is, I'm terrified because if I don't listen to what uh, the TV says, or if I don't do this, I'll be socially shunned, or I will be, uh, I'll lose my job, or I'll do that. Like, well, no, that's isn't this. That is a different belief that's acting upon your heart. And that is where um, people of all stripes went wrong. Emotion is a big issue. Correct. Uh, Thank you for bringing that up. Emotion and logic are the two big um, destroyers of spirit. Emotion will tug you away. Logic will tug you away. You will think you can outfox the universe by using logic. If I just find, uh, or I can convince myself of, through a, a proof of logic, that this is working. Or I have a strong emotion, and that, will, that guides me. You can, it's not that logic is bad or emotion is bad. Logic and emotion that aren't rooted in the word is bad. That's a that will pull you down. Yeah. Oh, is it too hot? Okay, sorry. Logic. The two hot people are saying that because you eat what God has said, the plan that He has made for you to figure out the why. But why is not for us. That's how. I mean, you understand what I mean? So yeah. It's a faith thing. The why is not always for us. The why is. Why does God do stuff? I can't always answer that, but for his glory. No mm-hmm. other reason. Log- other, other people use why in the, when you said emotional logic, and I'm like. 
Emotion and logic gives them a cheap why. It gives them a cheap why. It allows them to ignore God's command. So um, let's say down here on this path. Uh, emotion. Well, yeah. So emotion can say, oh, I see somebody. Um, let's see here. Okay. I see somebody sinning. But they are, uh, they are sinning while upset. And so I don't want to upset them further. I'm just going to be kind to them. Or I should say, I'm going to be nice to them. I'm not going to rebuke them. I'm not going to help them find the path. I'm going to have them go this way. And, or I'm going to go this way. And so your emotions play into you not following your purpose, which is to shepherd people, to evangelize, to show them the, the healing power of Christ. So you've made an emotional decision. Or... You've made a logical decision. Somebody's having a tantrum over there. Somebody is, uh, okay, you, you, you happen upon uh, the Gethsemane demoniac and they're having a, an episode and they're upset and they're sinning, you know, and, but you're like, instead of, well, emotionally, I don't want to upset the apple cart. Also, logically, I don't want to go over there because I don't want to maybe get inflicted any harm. I don't want to have to deal with that. It's logically for me to walk the other direction. And so both a logic and emotion set you down the same path, which is against God's word, which is God saying, there's a person in distress who needs the gospel. And I know this is not a perfect metaphor, but I hope you understand that this is both logic and emotion lead this without God working on you without spirit because often it, God will say, all right, I need you to go uh, speak the word, but I'll get arrested. That's logically not correct. Like I, I will, I don't want to be thrown in prison and killed. That's not the logic. Or I'm afraid of what might happen to me if I go and say these things, Jonah. That's emotion. That's, that's logic pointing in the same direction, which is against God. And so oftentimes in the word, You'd be like, but it's not logical for us to march around Jericho. Right. Amen. It's not logic. It's not, it, um, if I followed my emotions, David would have never sat, stepped forward on the battlefield against Goliath. Or seen where the was. Yes, exactly. Yes. yes. That's desire. And so they're the same direction. The illusion is choice. The illusion is I have a bunch of free will inside of sin. They don't see the sin. They only see the choice. But because they act on these flesh things, they, they think their mind is greater than God, pride, or they think their flesh desires, the emotions, the passions, they're the ones that drive them. They lead to the same place. You ultimately start making the same decisions toward death. And that's where we as Christians, as people who follow the Lord, need to be on guard for emotion and logic convincing ourselves or others influencing us. Or being able to recognize it. Exactly. And this is, this is the discernment of spirits. This is Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. This is, you know, we're in a fallen world. We're always up against this. And that's where um, true faith, look, this when a Christian follows this path, it looks looks like blindness to these people. Absolutely. But we have a full, true knowledge and trust in this pathway because we've seen it play out in our lives. We've seen it play out in Scripture. We've seen it play out in others. And that's where the, well, that's why it looks blind to some, but it is sure to us. And that does not mean we accidentally do the emotional thing. We, sometimes we make do the emotional thing. Sometimes we do the logical thing. And then we go, oh, that was a mistake. Forgive me, Lord, for having a higher mind than I should have. Forgive me, Lord, for reacting emotionally to a, you know, a, a petulant child or a, uh, a, an altercation at work. You know, these things can still happen. But we are... We have, it, we have revelation. We are, we are revealed that this exists. And so we know when we sin. We know when we go off the path. Or others who have the Holy Spirit can help us. They can say, I think you're heading the wrong direction. Here's why. And it's not me saying this. This is the word. And we can point to the word. Um, 
Yes. Any other questions on this? I know we didn't get into 22, but I felt like this was a good, good dive. Correct. I would say faith, faith in the heart produces actions. Faith in the heart produces actions. Because, and sometimes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's slothful. Like inaction is slothful. Inaction is, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an emotion and logic. It's like, well, if I don't do anything, if I put it in God's hands, or if I just ignore my own responsibility, then I can, you can that can come from an emotional place or a logical place. Like, if I'm, oh, I'm tired, I don't want to do anything. I just don't feel it. I don't feel impassioned to go in church, into church today. <laughs> or logically, it's like, no, I don't, I don't need to go. I, need, I know it's something I need to do, but I don't, I don't think I can. If I can just play around with my schedule or if I put it off long enough, you know, somebody else will take care of it. And so, like, you can, both of these things can play into sinful behavior. And, again, with anything that exists in the fallen world, whether it be, I use 9-11 or COVID or whatever the next thing is, just understand that and be listening for this, praying on this, to show direction, to show purpose, understanding. And we don't always necessarily have those answers, and that's why it's so important to be around the people of God, other people with the Holy Spirit, fellowship, so that way we can help each other down the path. And then don't fall prey to this. Don't fall prey to an idol, you know, on a TV or in your home or faith in something that isn't of God or isn't, um, is replacing God's provision in some fashion or form. Does that mean all countries or uh, institutions are bad? No, they could be all made up of Christians and they could be all following the Lord and God has anointed that institution, has, has given that institution power, direction, and authority. So it's not that all institutions are bad. It's more like where, what's the belief driving the people that compromise those things? And that's where and you could say, well, America was a faithful nation. We saw that in its representation and its decision-making in these things. Yes, but also no that we are a fallen people, that over any amount of time, our institutions will become corrupt. Our towel, towers will not be completed to heaven because God is the only thing that is eternal, not our institutions. And so to, to remember that and understand that today, you know, we are, we are not in the same place as we were 50 years ago or 50 years before that or 50 years before that as a country. But that does not mean that the word has changed or the word is not true. And that should always be, you know, as you develop and grow in your relationship with Christ as your Lord and Savior, that should be more readily apparent. And that takes practice to develop that relationship. It takes effort. It's not something you can sit around and just say, ah, God will take care of it. God, God will take care of provision, but also you have to turn to it. You have to choose it. You have to pursue it. You have to, yes, exactly. You have a responsibility to it. Yes. Any other questions on that? Because I just used the whole hour on that time. <laughs> I think that there's certain points in history that we look back on certain dates, certain times, Pearl Harbor, right. stormy the beaches. Mm -hmm. I think that someday COVID will be that same. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Waiting to see if she was going to say everybody has to shut down. Mm -hmm. And she did. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine what that was like for restaurants. Mm -hmm. Right. For those that are like, I mean, we, we provide service, we just don't talk on the phone. Right. But those people, I mean, that has ramifications that we'll see forever. Mm -hmm. Well, all the JRs are closed. And yeah. Well, they are. Specifically noted. Yes. That is it. I mean, that'll be yes. a date in history that will Definitely. come down in infamy, too. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Worldwide, too, not just the beaches of Normandy or Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. And that's where uh, I'd say the difference between, you know, like an event like um, Bleeding Kansas, you know, around the Civil War, 
was a you know a regional thing, mm -hmm. whereas COVID was more of a global thing. And when global things happen, I highly recommend diving into the word because then the word is playing out at a global scale, which yes. when we start talking about the whole of the world, then you really need to pay attention to what time it is. Not that you can know the time, but that you're checking with scripture to faithfully respond to something that has gripped the whole world because we have passages in scripture that say, watch out when those things are happening. <laughs> and those things are happening. Yes. So, okay. 22, we'll get into next week. And then 21, it's all going to be about the Apostles' Creed. We're going to talk a little bit about the Nicene Creed. We're going to talk about more things that we have discussed uh, today, but we'll, we'll, we'll less about sort of this and more about, you know, uh, true faith or what we need to or focus on in our uh, Christian faith. Okay.